Some lawmakers in South Sudan's Transitional Assembly say the Assembly leadership is dragging its feet on urgent humanitarian matters. On Tuesday this week, a sitting aimed at questioning five ministers was adjourned because some ministers were absent. For VOA News, Mayang David Mayar reports from Juba. South Sudan's Transitional National Legislative Assembly was thrown into disarray on Tuesday when Speaker Jema Nunu Kumba announced the adjournment of the sitting because some of the Samont ministers had not appeared. The members of parliament became divided as some wanted the discussion to continue. Shanding Maror, who represents northern Bahar el Ghazali state under the Sudan's People's Liberation Movement in Opposition Party, is one of the MPs who wanted the sitting to proceed. He accuses the Assembly's leadership of dragging its feet on national concerns, including the worsening food security situation. If not delay, then whoever, in, whoever come to the House should answer accordingly, because uh, the ministers are ministers, but any minister have his own ministry. Uh, the, the minister concern, or the minister on place, have to answer, have to tell us his own proposal, like what uh, minister of humanitarian uh, uh, affairs have done. Well, there will be nowhere of protecting the ministers. On Tuesday, the Transitional National Legislative Assembly summoned the ministers of Agriculture, Trade, Finance, Petroleum and Humanitarian Affairs to appear before lawmakers to answer questions on the looming hunger in the country. Two of the five ministers failed to show up, leading Speaker Gemma Nunu Kumba to adjourn the sitting. You know, these uh, three ministries are related. Agriculture, Trade, uh, Petroleum and Finance. The majority of them are not here, only one. Therefore, we will be wasting time and again we will be call them again. That's why we should just adjourn the city. Nunu says the two absent ministers were out of the country on an official mission. Albino Mayuenbol, another SPLMIO lawmaker, says the speaker was acting out of fear that President Salfakir will stop supporting them. She always fear uh, because, uh, you know, the kind of uh, revoking become a big issue here in Parliament. Anyone in that CLMIG, he, he can, he, they're done willing to tell the truth while they know the truth. Because uh, of revoking, they, they are fear maybe President can revoke them. She should put the interest of the people about. Because, you know, nation is about, the, we, all, all of us, we are, uh, a nation is above us. Mawian and Deng say South Sudanese in the countryside are dying in silence and parliament needs to urgently question the ministers about their plans to help them. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, or UN OCHA, says 9 million people, 72 percent of South Sudan's population, will require humanitarian assistance this year. More than 7 million people are expected to experience severe food insecurity by July. Lino Hutu, an SPLM lawmaker, says the Transitional Legislative Assembly is committed to holding the executive accountable for addressing the humanitarian situation in the country. The parliament has been doing very, 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 very well, including our right honourable speaker. You see, this parliament, although it is an appointment, I mean, it is an appointed parliament, it is doing very well, you know. The parliament has been standing very, 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 very strong to resolve those simmering issues as far as uh, uh, the lives of our people are concerned. Hutu says South Sudan should focus on agriculture to solve the worsening economic situation in the country. For VOA News, I'm a young David. Kenya will submit former Prime Minister Raila Odinga's African Union Commission candidacy by June 30th, Prime Cabinet Secretary Musalia Mudavadi announced on Wednesday. Addressing a joint press briefing at his railway's headquarters offices, Mr. Mudavadi said they were farming up preparatory and application documents together with requisite translations of the resume into six African Union languages, French, English, Kiswahili, Arabic, Portuguese, and Spanish for submission to the African Union Secretariat by the end of the month. Mr. Mudavadi, who is also the Foreign and Diaspora Affairs SS, 
CS said the government was also working on a secretariat to spearhead the ODM leaders' campaigns. Overall, the campaigns are led by the state with highly experienced and knowledgeable officers. The State Department for Foreign Affairs has established a campaign secretariat, which includes the candidate's strategy team, Mr. Mudavadi said. The secretariat, he noted, will prepare all the briefs for use by the candidate, develop campaign materials including digital presence, and prepare for the public debate to be broadcast to African citizens. This will take place six months before the election date, Mr. Mudavadi said. He said that an empirical campaign strategy has been developed, which includes identifying opportunities, challenges, and risks that Kenya's candidature faces. Additionally, the campaign involves outreach program to capital of African Union member states, briefing of Kenya missions abroad, and engagements with the diplomatic corps in Nairobi. Kenya is certain that our candidate, Lieutenant Honorable Ryle Dinger has the credentials and the passion to advocate for Africa's interest globally and champion for more opportunities for Africa and her people. Mr. Odinger, he said, was vying for a position in Africa, not in the government or Kenya, Republic of Kenya. Mr. Odinga, who Accompanied Mr. Modavadi said he was seeking the position as a Kenyan and that nobody had asked him to contest. Thank you so much for watching.